I'm Sparky Allison. I'm the one in the middle. On the left is Cheryl Stanton, and on the right is Abigail Russell. And we are the Revolutionary Women in Music. This program was originally scheduled to be at the Springfield Main Library as part of the Rotunda Rhythm Series, but the pandemic changed things. We would like to thank the Springfield Cultural Council for bringing this concert to you. Um, can I start us off? Go for it. <laughs> so here's one of my newer tunes. And uh, this one uh, was, uh, and Abby didn't know this until yesterday, uh, this was in part um, um, inspired by Abigail. Uh, this is just a, a momentous year. It's a moment of change for everybody, and we're all adjusting to the pandemic and adjusting to life is just never going to be what we expected it to be. And, uh, you know, all those in my day stories are really going to change. Uh, but as we were working together, co writing a song for this show, um, Abby was going through her senior year, and that not being what everybody else has known as a senior year. And she was bummed out about the you know, prom and no, no events, and then the graduation isn't going to be the same if they even get to graduate at all, and how's that going to turn out? So um, I, I, I felt bad for, for Abby and her friends and the young people who were going through that. And, um, and at the same time, I was working and talking with people in, <clears throat> in Nashville about the, the uh, you know, Nashville music is all that bro country. And you don't hear too much of the women sticking together and having some fun and going out for a drive. And so I thought about that. I thought those are things that, that we as women appreciate too, getting in the car and going someplace and raising a little heck and having some fun. And, um, and it is these memories that we hold on to. And this is going to be a memory that I'm going to cherish for a long time. So before I get choked up, this song is called <laughs> Anytime at All.
It's about the um, Florida Reform School. Um, about eight years ago, uh, I read an article about uh, the Florida State University um, students. They were graduate students who had gone to Dozer uh, Reform School for Boys and had started to um, do an archeological dig. And what they discovered was that um, boys had been murdered um, all the way up to 1970. And so that really sat with me for a couple of years. And it couldn't quite come out in a song. I, couldn't, it, I knew I needed to write it, but I couldn't figure out how. And so I ended up in a songwriting um, retreat and ended up uh, working with other uh, musicians and songwriters. And through that process, it just sort of spilled out. And these, I, I don't know if you guys have that experience where their song just like falls out of you. Absolutely. And it just is like in a day, it's there. Yes. That was yes. this, oh my goodness. Um, so I'm sure we'll talk about songwriting in a little bit, but um, this is really a song for them. And, and literally every time I play it, uh, it just comes out uh, uh, in memory of, of those men, young boys uh, who were unfortunately murdered. called White House Boys. Hear the boots scrape across the gravel They're coming for one more Hear them laughing Who's got a missing? He's only five years old, five years old. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Tell Yeah. 
It will be on my YouTube page. It will be on my fa my uh, Facebook page. Um, and I hope these ladies will share it on their pages as well so we can share it with as many people as possible. Um, uh, it's, it's just been an amazing experience. So the times have changed for songwriting. That, that's, that's for sure. But, uh, so this is one of my new, newer songs. I think it may actually be the, well, it's the newest song that I'm playing. Um, I think I maybe wrote one more after this. Um, but this is a true story. I got up one morning and, and I have been, since the pandemic, having incredibly strange dreams and having a terrible insomnia. So I'm, I'm up every couple of hours and then I go on Facebook and I find that somebody else is up at that hour too. But we won't name any names. <laughs> but I see that little green light, I'm like, okay, I'm not the only one who can't sleep. <laughs> so this is what it means. Early morning, I hear rain. Another sleepless night again. Get up and go outside. Let it pour down on me.
let it be. I just kind of started writing my own words to their melodies and then started coming up with my own melodies and just kind of went from there. So since I was a little six-year-old watching him, I'm much younger than you are now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm 12 years different. But... All right. Oh, All I, right. Love, I love your songs. I enjoy listening Thank to you so songs. much. So this next song is actually about two years old. I wrote it when I was 16 years old and looking back now, I'm 18. It's kind of like, oh my goodness, you know, I felt, I feel like it's been a while and I know it hasn't, but I have felt, I feel like especially in these past few months, I feel like I've grown up a lot with, um, you know, having to deal with so much change. So this is a song I actually put on my first and currently only EP called People Problems. It's out on all streaming platforms if you want to check it out. But uh, this one is called If Only and I really hope you guys like it. If only 
Thank you. I love it. Thank I just you. love having some people say thank you. They just capture that moment. And oh, everybody's thank you. had it. But you just spin it into this <laughs> wonderful new, fresh, like thank just you. look, and it's just fun to listen to, and thank yeah, you. they are amazing. And can't you hear that on the radio? I can totally hear. I can. I can see you, and yeah. Oh my goodness! Just remember where you came from. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Are you gonna do four one three later? Because you know. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. I'm gonna do uh, Caravan Lullaby. Uh, this is another song that. Um, really spoke to me from the headlines, uh, wow, probably three, four years ago now, um, <clears throat> when the immigrants were um, really coming up from Central America, uh, really meeting some hostility um, that uh, the United States had not previously been known for. Um, and I really felt, uh, again, like a voice needed to be um, sung. Uh, so this came out of that. Um, and then, yeah. So um, I'm going to do a 
tune that came out of a songwriting exercise. Um, I had been involved in a songwriter group where we would, um, somebody would throw out a word and you would write a song around that word. And it was a great way to really challenge yourself and you know, get the creative juices going. And somebody gave the term ashes. I'm like, really? <laughs> I got nothing. I don't know, you know. And I sat with that for a while. And you've got a short time frame that you're supposed to write in. We're all sitting in a room together, and I'm thinking, God, what am I going to do? And um, all I kept thinking was, Ash, Ash, dust to you know, but, Okay, but how do you make that into a song? <laughs> you know? But there's a gazillion ways you could write it, I suppose. So this is called Ashes to Ashes. Flame shot up in the charcoal night, moonlit sky glow. She got the engine and grind and the game, spew pedal down the road. Nothing left to hold her, memories come up in flames. Like the phoenix from the fire, she had a chance. Start her life again. Thank you. What was the phrase again? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> 
Did I not use it enough times? <laughs> yeah. So, fun, funny story about that, the, the White House Boys tune was stuck and I knew I needed to write it and I, I went to this um, retreat, as I said, and the, the phrase I got was, lift this hammer. Ah. And it just, from that moment, was like, ah, oh, that fits. And wow. it was this perfect storm of timing and yeah. readiness and support and yeah. other people. It was oh really. I have to. I have to yeah. go do one of those once we can be around other people again. Yeah. Yes. Like-minded, like crazy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like get together with with people and just co-write. Absolutely. Stuff. Absolutely. Get us up. Get together and do absolutely again. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Oh, I would do that in a But the wonderful thing about doing that is that you you have that that aha moment where someone will say something and yeah. It, oh my God, it fits perfectly. Or, or that word might just trigger something else, and it all comes together. And it's that that meeting of the minds, and yeah. you're on the same plane with the with the message you're trying to get across. And that's really cool. It's a fun time. Absolutely. Do it. Do it. I will once once this is all over. <laughs> um, <Someday>. Yes. <laughs> but actually, it kind of leads into my next song, which is called "One of Those Days." Um, it was one of those days when I wrote it. I was just having a day. I was in a mood and. I really wanted to write a song and I just couldn't figure out what I wanted to write about. And I sat there and I find that with me, if I try to force something, it just, it never works. It never works if I, you know, so I'm just sitting there and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to write a song about not being able to write a song. <laughs> and that's what I did. <laughs> and so this is kind of what became of it. And this one's called One of Those Days.
And mom's always going to ask what's wrong. You know? Yes, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, moms do. Moms do that. I think one of the really great things about um, writing songs now is the technology. So that comes in my shuffle on my phone. Like, and it's like, you're on the radio. Aww. And that's the most amazing thing. You're can you just picture yourself driving down the road and that song comes on and you're like, yep, I'm just, oh, and it's amazing. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank so, you so much. You're right up there on top 40. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And I had you guys playing on my on my my what is it, the iPhone um, when I was working the other day, so that was Aww. that was cool. Uh, awesome. Got my buds with me. Yeah. <laughs> but it is. It makes it such a smaller world. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, as a songwriter, um, it was it's an amazing experience to I think you know growing up you think music is like this perfect thing and it's on an album and it's produced and and I. I really prefer now small, intimate settings, getting to know people, and you know, it's just such a different Absolutely. experience. And I, I think, although you know, singing and songwriting right now is a challenge, um, <laughs> but um, it really makes it so close and so personal. Absolutely. Yes. So speaking of personal, this is a song. Um, uh, I never really know how to introduce this song. So um, I'm a mother of five, um, but I, we did um, have a son that passed away uh, very young. And um, writing songs has been really helpful, I think, in thinking about um, grief and what it means to move through that process of grief. Um, and I think being able to sing this and write this for other people um, who have maybe been going through the same thing. So this is called First Time. First time I listened, didn't hear you cry was the first time I heard. The silence of goodbye was the first time I reached to hold you. You were there was the first time I learned God doesn't answer. All of your prayers. All of First time I saw you smile, another child's eyes was the first time I learned. That love doesn't hide was the first time I heard your laughter. Whispered all the leaves was the first time I learned. The joy is more than it seems. More than Yes, I have asked a million times, and then I have asked a million more, and still I don't know the answer to why. First time I walked to meet the day's dawn was the first time.
you're oh really my God. God. See, I'm gonna make it on now. I also want to get Ari. I know. It's just, ugh. yeah. That's a heavy song. Yeah. It's like, what's that? Yeah, you can share all song. It's like, wow. Give me a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, uh, okay, yeah. Whew. All right, well, I'm going to have to lighten things yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> I got to do that. <laughs> so, <clears throat> oh, yes. Oh, I guess. I wrote this song a number of years ago um, and entered the Connecticut River Song Contest. And the Connecticut River, if you haven't been on it, you really need to make time in your lifetime to get on somewhere on that river between the very top of Vermont to Long Island. It's just, you know, over 400 miles of magnificence. And it's really been cleaned up a lot you know, over the years. And um, I've kayaked, I've uh, rode crew, um, I've canoed, I've taken my motorboat out there. I much prefer going out there by canoe. Um, because it's a nice slow pace and I would go out like 4 o'clock in the morning and I would see the eagles coming out and feeding and I'd see the blue heron along the shoreline and I would just be so grateful that we have this river in our piece of land here. This is just a magnificent place to be. And lo and behold, I won first prize for this song. So um, I would like y'all to take a little trip up the river with me, okay? And um, I'm going to have my, uh, my sailor mates here help us out on this tune. And uh, I want everybody to put your life jackets on, please. Secure them properly. Make sure they fit nicely. You're not going to slide through them. You fall overboard. All right? And no roughhousing on the boat. That's number one. And uh, oh, we're, we're going to have a little fun. Yes. Okay, ready? Absolutely. Oh, yes. All dressed up. Ready to go. I know. All dressed <laughs> up. <laughs> All right, and I'd like the, the first mate to whistle for us. Uh, everybody, let's get going. Where's your ship's whistle? That is my ship's whistle. <laughs> Sounds like Cheryl sure needs a little more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> The story of Cheryl's life. Yes. Holy moly. Yeah, I mean, what are we going to do with that? I, I don't know. I'm sorry. That's I'm all you got? Sure. That's all I got. That's all you got? That's all I got. Let's enjoy the ride. Put it up. Life jacket on. Launch my boat down at the Oxbo. It starts. Break it down. Rev it up, rev it up. Ooh, let it go. Slap the water. Spray the mist. It's relaxing. It's refreshing. Sun kiss like a whole bit. Coming through the haze. River Dates Cottonwood Trees Line the river bank There's a great blue heron near the shore And every time I see the eagles well, I give thanks for the Connecticut River and the sun once more Two small girl dogs 
been just a ton of fun and a nice respite from COVID. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Yes. Actually, that's a great segue to this song. This song is about, I think, dealing with um, the frustration of not being able to balance everything uh, in your life. Um, so uh, it's called Part-Time Life. <clears throat> So tired of living this part-time life, this part-time life with this full-time heart. So tired of living this part-time life, this part-time life with this full-time heart of mine. Well, I'm going to So tired of listening to the prattle and the noise, to the prattle and the noise, did we forget about joy? I'm so tired of listening to the prattle and the noise, to the prattle and the noise, did we forget about all our joy? If I asked, what would you say? Would you say it's okay? Would you really know? If I share with you my fears? I'm so tired of living this part-time life. Part-time life with this full-time heart. I'm so tired of living this part-time life. This part-time life with this full-time heart of mine. So tired of waiting. Hoping and praying, hoping and praying, just getting by. So tired of waiting, hoping and praying, hoping and praying, watching my life go by. If I asked, what would you say? Would you say it's okay? Would you really care? If I share with you my fears? I'm so tired of living this part-time life. Part-time life with this full-time heart. I'm so tired of living this part-time life. This part-time life with this full-time heart. I do have to say a, a, a cardinal flew by, and you know you're, you you get a <sighs> no, I know. It was like there's a cardinal, and you know people who know birds know that cardinals come for you know people who have passed and you know to keep us connected. So life is like that. Yeah. <clears throat> so that went up. So um, this is going to be my last song. Um, this one's actually all about living 
here in Springfield, Massachusetts. I was born and raised here. Um, and I moved here when I was about two. And um, I just, my life has kind of revolved around growing up here in Springfield and just my friends, family, everything. And so this song is just all about the 413 and not just Springfield, but Western Mass. And um, I hope that all of you guys out there can relate to this. And, um, you know, I think our city is kind of like a little hidden gem and, and Western Mass is like a hidden gem as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this last one and this is 413. Part of our project for this concert, we got together and co-wrote a tune called We Are the Revolution. And uh, what a thrill that was to do that. And uh, if there, do you have any anecdote? Do you have a quick anecdote about this song or the process? Oh, or? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that, <laughs> a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, well, I mean, for me, this is my first time really co-writing. So, you know, I know for Sparky, it was really different writing something over Zoom, whereas I was on Zoom pretty much seven hours a day for school. So I was, you know, kind of like, all right, this is just my day now. And so I think we all kind of came in with different experience levels, me being like the least experienced of the group. And 
Um, it was just like a really, really awesome experience to write with other writers, especially these two, and just to you know write something that I think is really important, especially now, um, this year and this time that we're in. Um, and I just I'm like proud of what we did together, and I'm just I was an honor to be a part of it. <laughs> awesome, to be a part of it with you. Yeah, for me it was really interesting that we were able to shape this song from really three perspectives and yeah. really three entry points, and it works amazingly well yes. uh, doing that. Because yep. uh, it could have been scattered, but it, it really came together and it was very interesting because we all definitely have a piece of it. Yes, yes. Absolutely. And, it, and the interesting thing was, for me, I love the process of writing. I just love playing with the words and creating the story. But it, it was interesting how we each took a piece and said, okay, we're gonna, what, what we think is important in this song, being uh, revolutionary women, and how history has um, uh, gone before us and set, paved the way, and what a tremendous revolution we had this year, uh, on top of that. So this song is very important for that. But then, when we got together and we started shaping the, the verses and shaping the chorus and chipping away, and. I remember having a, a, we had a bridge that was twice as long. I don't know if I say a lot, but I'm thinking, okay, yeah. let's trim this down. Yeah, yeah. There was so much to say, but we managed to, we managed to say what we need to say um, for something that is hundreds of years in the making. Yep. Oh. Finally. We won't let our sins 